Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, I am Clementine, and as always, I'm Super Saiyan. And in this video, we're gonna make a custom guitar neck from an antique oak table. I will show and explain the entire process, including tips, tricks, mistakes, and victories. And since this is the second video in the Rule Breaker slash Mythbuster guitar build series, we'll see what rules we can break and miss we can dispel. If this sounds like something you might be interested in, stay tuned. Let's make some sawdust. So, the first thing I did was to take this level to the edge of the table on the wood that I plan on using, and using a palm sander, I make sure that it's level and flat. Next, I used the neck from my test mule guitar to mark out a rough template. And using a level, I have measured and marked the center line. I took a custom headstock template I had made previously and gave that a rough tracing. After a couple of tries and some hand-drawn artistic freedom, I wound up with this. Now to measure and mark the length of the truss rod slot. Measure twice, cut once. Now for the first shallow pass of routing, using a jig on the side of the router to keep it in line. Then a test fit for depth. Now I'm going to run this segment in real time so that you can see just how well this cheap Harbor Freight router and bit completely evacuated this 80 year old oak. As you'll see later in the video, hardwood is an understatement. Now it's time to measure the deeper heel end of the truss rod slot and hog that out, though I got a little overzealous. Now the truss rod is bedded in under the surface. I left a little gap at the top so that it can do its work without binding. See how I overcut that heel? But it ended up not mattering in the end, as you will see shortly. Depth was set on the skill saw, so as soon as I started my cut, I could tell the saw was bogging down and trying to kick back the entire time. You can see by the size of the chips that the uh, blade is very sharp. Sorry Black & Decker, uh, Harbor Freight bested you. Cutting the end grain was even harder. Then it was free except for one screw that I didn't know about and I'm glad I didn't hit it with the router or the saw. So it's time to sit up at the saw and cut this thing out. And if you don't have a band saw like this, don't worry, you can do the same work with a thrift store jigsaw or a cheap coping saw. Well, I was just about to make my cut and the camera switched off. So I made a whole nother neck blank. And I'll say a headstock looks scary, but these straight cuts are the hardest. Now while I cut this, a little bit about bandsaws. To build guitars, you really need a 12 inch bandsaw at least. I got this saw on a great deal from Facebook Marketplace delivered to my door. It was less than a Harbor Freight 9 inch desktop saw with a coupon. So deals can be found and had, although it did need a ton of work. But what really makes a bandsaw cut good and act good is a sharp blade and a good setup. And videos can be found online of how to set up a bandsaw properly, as well as repair information and videos for just about every brand out there. It's mostly about getting the gullet of the teeth centered on the tires and getting your guides set up correctly. I also find that the cheap junk blades nowadays are just fine, though they ha may have to be trued up with a grinder. Now look at this funny move I have to do because I didn't think ahead and I got my blade captured on the last cut and you can see the headstock shape is not exactly right and the sides aren't exactly straight but that's fine it's mostly sanding that you'll use to shape it and look how much better that truss rod slot is on the third time i ever used a router and now for a myth alert remember oak is not a tone wood Since I want to kill all my sustain with a roller nut, <laughs> the axle has to be placed directly above the nut slot. So the miter box and hacksaw is your friend. I decided to use the second neck that I made, so I'm marking a center point. It's longer and thinner, so I just eyeballed and marked another fret slot. And I'm much happier with that second truss rod's routing. Miter box and hacksaw again, and then finished it up with a coping saw, and you can't tell it apart from the other ones. I roughed up the back of the fretboard with a sure form block, and also Shout out to Adirondack Tonewood on eBay. Then the truss rod was masked off to keep it from getting glued in place and the excess tape was cut and removed. And I used this glue cause it's what I had. Wiped off the sanding dust and it's time to apply and spread adhesive. Center, place and clamp the fretboard. Remove the excess glue with a damp rag. Then stare at my feet for 12 hours. Then the clamps were removed. It all sounds like one piece of wood now and I can't tear the fretboard off. So that's good. 
back to the saw to trim off the excess and I was surprised at the way the blade would skip across the side of the neck and not cut it. And it's starting to look something like a guitar. So my stupid self thought I could do this indoors. <laughs> Therefore we find ourselves in the bright sunlight not only flushing the fretboard but taking a sight line down the side and placing my finger on a high spot and concentrating on that to get the side of the neck straight. It came out pretty good, but if you notice that truss rod is off center and I'm using my finger to cover it up out of embarrassment. I don't know why it's not like I've ever done this before, but if you look at that grain, it ended up being a blessing in disguise. This oak is not quarter sawn. Now I need a 10 inch radius block, so a scrap 2x4 and a speaker basket makes a good template. Once again, back to the saw. I was surprised it did so well with a finished blade. A little bit of hand sanding got it fixed up just right. I took some of this Harbor Freight 80 grit, stuck it on there, and folded it around. Then there was a whole lot of this. I'm counting my strokes and then flipping the block and making the same number of strokes in the opposite direction. Then the entire operation was flipped 180 degrees and the counting commenced once more. Then a generous amount of hand sanding was used to achieve a 10 to 14 inch compound radius. That compound radius achieved an evenly thin fretboard from the neck to the heel. But due to that, all the fret slots had to be recut, requiring a great deal more progressive hand sanding. These fender frets are supposed to be nickel, but as you can see, I think they turned out to be stainless. Hold on to them when you cut them. So I sorted and numbered them into a block of foam and started cutting them to size. Then a triangular file was used to soften the edges of the slots. What do you know? More progressive sanding. Then a hobby knife was used to remove the dust. Then I started removing the tangs from the ends to prevent fret sprout and knocking them in there like Woody Woodpecker for a good long while. Now we have something about like this and I started to get pretty excited. But then I started flooding the channels with super glue and noticed I wasn't very happy with the way the ends of the frets were sticking up. So I tried a clamp and it went so well that I went full anal retentive and clamped every fret end down and glued them in. Then I used the single bastard side of a file to cut them flush. I love that zippy sound it made, but my dog didn't appreciate it so much. You can actually hear when the fret becomes flush. And since it was working so well, I decided to go ahead and chamfer the ends of the frets. And yep, sanding again. Then a small hand file was used around the fret corners. It worked great because the sides of this cheap file that were toward the fretboard were unmachined. So it's time to fix that gnarly hand threaded flathead screw hole. So I just fill her with glue. I just inserted a bamboo cooking skewer, clip it off and hammer it in there. A Little bit of progressive sanding and it never happened. Let's call it a beauty mark. It's a knot hole. Now, this is a brand new spade bit. I said it was hard, right? Now watch, it starts smoking. I can see embers down in there and I'm afraid it's about to set a fire. I can envision the sawdust lighting on fire and going through the cracks in the wood and getting out of control. Luckily, it all stayed put so I decided to proceed, but with caution. Little bit of progressive sanding on the tear out on the back and she's fit as a git fiddle. Now this headstock design is one of my own creation. So if one of you screen caps this and uses it, I'm gonna say, good job, that looks great, I love it. I got my fingers crossed on this hole placement and making sure that the tuners won't interfere with each other. And I got lucky. That's some tolerance within the thousands. So now to start marking my headstock thinning radius. And I used a coal from an earlier kick guitar headstock to get the thickness. And here's a part that I completely overthought for a long time and dreaded, which I should have just went for it. Because you can see it's not perfect, but I have a remedy for that. Cheap little eBay sanding drum and Harbor Freight drill press did it right up and got the headstock shape where I wanted it. Not sponsors, of course. I used a smaller radius sanding drum to do some tighter radius and finishing work. And now to drill the side marker dot holes. Note the little paper tape flag used as a depth gauge. It was pretty fiddly, but I think it came out good. And to fill the holes, bamboo cooking skewers. I basically used the same process as the screw hole. Then I cut them off with a fine tooth hacksaw blade, ripped them flush with the file, smoothed them out with a sharp chisel, Harbor Freight of course, 
Then after a little bit of sanding and a spit shine, yeah, gross, I know. I think that looks pretty bitchin' and I was getting pretty excited at this point. So I guess I wanted to pretend I was some kind of fancy luthier and use my shiny new Japanese saw rasp, but after working real hard on it for about five minutes, this is where I was at. It's easy enough to use, it works great, but uh, you can take a welder out of the shop, but you can't take the shop out of a welder. This is a side grinder with a 60 grit flapper disc. And this is real time, and yeah, now that side is round. If you use one of these, be careful, it can hurt you. Take light strokes, you don't wanna get into your truss rod channel and put a hole in the neck. Don't worry if it looks all asymmetrical and wonky. It's kinda like whittling with a knife, you can get it smooth later. Just don't take too much, cause you can't put it back. So here's where I'm at with the side grinder in less than four minutes. And now it's time to use that rasp. It has an aggressive side with large teeth and a less aggressive side with smaller teeth and that's what I use for all this finish work. But surprisingly, you have to be pretty careful with it too. It will take a chunk out in one swipe. Don't let this put you off if you don't have a side grinder or a Japanese saw rasp. You could take a handsaw and cut the corners off and then use rough grit sandpaper or in the worst case scenario a piece of broken cinder block to achieve the same results so at this intermediate stage i started using the radius block and regular hand sandpaper to try to smooth down all the scratches and get the right shapes it was kind of a back and forth and check it frequently kind of thing then i got it down into my lap so i could do the real pretty work with it with progressive sandpapers I was starting to be real surprised at how it was looking like some kind of store-bought kit neck. So now it was time to do some hand sanding to get the bandsaw marks out of the face of the headstock and also do some supplemental shaping. If you've got the patience, as much hand sanding as you can do is the way to go. It's so slow that you can see a mistake happening and fix it, especially in a hardwood like oak or maple. So, this is what we ended up with. As you can see, it's not finished sanded, and the fretboard's still a little rough, and there's still a little bit of glue on the frets. That will all be addressed during the fret work and the finishing, but I love the way that the back of this neck turned out. It is the perfect radius for my hand because I kept checking it with my hand and made it fit me. It's asymmetrical toward the fat strings because I like to play with my thumb, and it's thin and deep at the neck, but at the heel it's flat and wide, like the fretboard, and these are good reasons to fabricate your own neck. Well, that just about does it for this build video. And first of all, if you're still here, thank you so very much. If you found this educational or entertaining in any way, bitch slap that like button. And if you like this kind of content and want to see more of it, smash that subscribe widget. Like I said in the previous video where I made a custom P90 style pickup from a scrap 2x4, the reason I'm doing this rule breaker slash myth buster guitar series is definitely not to be a smart ass. I want to break some rules and dispel some myths that keep going around on Facebook guitar groups, and you may have seen them mindlessly repeated in guitar forums on the internet. And most of all, I want to show you guys that you can do this. This is my first neck build, and it doesn't take a lot of money, it's just a lot of time. I estimate this complete neck build at about $30, and if I would've had the confidence in myself to make my own fretboard with if scrap lumber, then I'm sure I could've done it for about $15. And that means you can too, I know nothing about woodworking. If you're timid about it like I was at first, go to your local big box store and buy like a cheap pine 1x4, and just start hacking and sanding at it, I think you will be very surprised surprise if you're worried about moisture cut it down and stick it in the oven they sell sandpaper at the dollar store well if you want to see the rest of this guitar come together from wacky and unorthodox methods and materials we still gotta make a five dollar roller bridge not suck we gotta build the oak body from a table we gotta build some split single coil pickups from a two by four we gotta polish frets like a girl it's gotta have finishing and assembly we gotta make a cheap chinese bigsby stay in tune if you love these ideas if you hate them let me know got any questions or suggestions place them in the doobly doo below heck if you think i should start a patreon and maybe you would like to support me you see i can get a good bang for the buck and i love to learn and empower people with knowledge this is clementine and you have been watching heavy metal atc and i appreciate your time till next time